tricky. This is very, very tricky. And through a lot of Brian's research, you know, you and I just can't see a lot of this stuff. And one of the things on the serve that it just, it's, it just blows me away and it's very hard to understand. It's hard initially when I explain this to the students, to the parents, and I know it's going to be a little confusing to uh, a lot of you here, but you got to stay with me because to me this is a game changer where I'm going to tell you on the serve. Game changer. This is the number one culprit. This is the number one problem globally around the world. What I'm going to talk about. No one hardly, can, very few people see it. A lot, no one's looking for it. It happens so quickly. You and I just can't see it. And it's, it's the biggest problem out there. And so I'll try to just talk about it in detail because it's very, very confusing. But if you can put this in your toolbox, it could be one of the most powerful things that you've ever maybe experienced or learned in, in teaching tennis regarding the serve. The timing of the leg drive and the racket entry. Forget the grip for a second and bending and all these other things that go into the serve. The number one problem around the world doesn't matter club player, it doesn't matter college player, it does, and this is a little more prominent on on the women's tour, and it's, in my opinion, because the guys at a younger age are throwing more, they synchronize the lower body to drive the engine, football, uh, baseball, whatever it is, the timing of the leg drive and the racket entry is timed much better. Now there's a lot of uh, females out there that serve, that their serve is biomechanically pretty correct. But I'll go out on a limb and say it's well into the 90% that most of them are all incorrect. Almost all of them on the second serve are well. Let me explain. This is key. When you're hitting the serve, we've all been taught you want to relax, you want to be smooth, you want a continuous motion, all that stuff. Forget about that for a second. That's not what I'm going to talk about. What I'm going to talk about is when should the racket enter this area? And if you're not looking for it, well, first you got to be aware of it. Then once you're aware of it, then you got to look at it. Then you got to really see it because if it, if they might be in there 20%, 30%. Some people are in there way over here before the legs dry. Let me explain because I know a lot of people are confused. Let's just say I go into my surf. I'm going to do, and I'll talk a little bit about some of the, the key things on the serve in general. You go to serve the ball, the tossing and the bending and the tilting. There's going to be a toss, a bend, and a tilt. And in general, probably the most optimal way to do it should be at the same time. Instead of going, ooh, ah, ooh, okay? Instead of having a shake and a bake and whatever, you want to try to toss, bend, and tilt at the same time. Guy named Fetter does that, he's pretty good, okay? So toss, bend, and tilt at the same time. So that's just something right off the top that everybody should remember. If you can toss, bend, and tilt at the same time, you're going to be more rhythmic. The position of the elbow. The elbow should always be shoulder, shoulder, elbow. It should always be. I can draw a straight line, don't even need to look. There's a straight line through my shoulder, shoulder, elbow every time. It's almost going to be like a seesaw or a teeter-totter. I change this, but I don't change the angle. This angle is a constant. One of the biggest things, there was one kid, his elbow was three inches too low. We had him serve from this position. The next serve, he hit, this, the next serve, he hit it 12 miles faster because you can get over the top quicker. And I'll get into that in a second. But that's not what we're here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is how this should be timed. Now, toss in the middle. Shoulder, shoulder, elbow, here's what happens. The number one problem, when the racket starts to come towards this area, when the racket starts to enter, all right, when the racket starts to enter, and I wouldn't even go and tell people the back scratch and stuff like that. If you want to use that as a teaching tool or whatever, that might be good, but that can mess a lot of people up because they stick it down there a week early, and that kind of acerbates the problem I'm talking about. Now, you might get the kids to hit up more, but just be careful about that. Because here's what should happen. The minute the racket starts to go, you're up in this position at 90 degrees. The minute the racket starts to come towards the ear, and that's the entry point, it's towards your ear. You don't want to 
them do what we call externally rotate and go that way. A lot of kids do that. You see like the frying pan or waiter or whatever. All right? So the racket comes this way. And I'll talk about that in a minute also. The key is on toss, bend, and tilt. Now from this position, anybody want to guess what happens next? So, okay, this is the key. If I had anybody come out here and throw a ball, everybody would do it right. Well, maybe John would, but most everybody would do it right, okay? <laughs> hey, you're in the front row, okay? Everybody would do it right. Leg drive initiates racket speed. Leg drive biomechanically initiates the racket speed. There's a timing that has to occur. Here's what happens. Unfortunately, you see it, people throw a football, a baseball, any type of throwing, it doesn't get that messed up. In tennis, unfortunately, you have a racket in your hand. Your arm is now twice as long. That's just the deal. So, because you're taught to be smooth and you're taught to be relaxed, you go back, this gets in there 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, say, I mean, some people are here. It might be continuous. And then they start their leg drive. It's like me starting my leg drive when the racket's here. You start the leg drive, watch. See how this is dynamic. Look, this is dynamic, okay? It's dynamic. Now watch this, same thing. It's dynamic. The leg drive initiates the racket as it comes in. So what we found out, and this is huge. So many people serve, it just went off the charts just by this. But you got this is the only thing I look for. I don't talk about the ball toss unless they're tossing it like in a tree or something. I mean, get into that. <laughs> this is the number one call for even if they start their leg drive here, I don't know how much power they're losing. Ask Brian if you could ever measure that. It's it's huge. They start the leg drive too soon. Now, the great Venus, as people say, you know, it's just great serve, whatever, whatever. Not true whatsoever. Serena does. The timing of it is almost spot on, even though on her second serve she's in too soon. Here's, here's B, all right? She does her thing, forget all the other things. Her racket is right there. Forget where, forget even in here. Her, she's not only in too soon, she's on this side of her body. And then she drives her legs. And being 6'1", 160, this is why you see this come out at the end. The people on TV are going, on under the surf 68 miles an hour in the middle of the box like a nice little butterfly. Her head went this way, her leg went that way, her head, her hip went that way. If you're, if you got that much linkage and you're that athletic as uh, Venus is, and you drive as hard as you can from here, you're going to go in that direction. Try it when you go home. You got insurance, okay? So <laughs> and what I'm saying is, she probably could have hit. 140 on her first serve. I'm serious. Because you can't, you know, you got a, a body like that, that's a gift. And her second serve could have been 105, 110. Instead of second serves in the 60 mile an hour range. What's going on? Something's the matter. It's all timing. The timing is so discombobulated, it's out of control. So, as the racket starts to enter, watch. As the racket starts to enter, the legs drive the racket. As the racket starts to enter the back, the legs drive first. What we call, we see people leak. They leak in 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. Then we see them leak in there all the time. Here's the problem. You can still get it in. You can still hit it 100 some miles an hour. You can get away with it. But the bottom line is, what did you leave off the table? What could you have had during your career if you'd have had more optimal mechanics? And this is a hard one to see because we're looking at someone and they're all smooth and relaxed. Yeah. Perfect example. What, tell me which one you think is a better player. Player A? Okay. Player B. A lot of people might think A because you cosmetically it was smoother, it was relaxed, it looked good. My racket was down my back all the way when my legs started driving. On the second one, I built in a hesitation. And it was interesting, when you have a hesitation, I'm getting into the correction now, you can't just say, uh, hey Matt, you're into your back too soon. Good luck, buddy. It ain't gonna work. You gotta, then you, how do we correct it? Here's what we do. We put you on probation, okay? I know some of you guys have been there too, all right? We put you on probation. 
want you to start right here. All right, I'm just going to do your regular serve. I want you to stand like this. And when you toss the ball, you do the serve. So she tosses it, does the serve, hits the racket, the ball goes that way. So she goes, this sucks. And I say, okay, what I want you to do, the reason why we're serving is because of what these guys told me. That your second serves this, and you're not getting enough of this, whatever. Do another one. So she served another one. And I think she hit the bottom of the net. And she served another one. See, when people want to change stuff, they don't understand. It takes a little bit of time. That's the last time I figured that one out. It takes time. We wouldn't be changing it if it was, like, amazing. You know, if you're on TV or something in top ten, then we can have a discussion. But if, if why are we doing this? Because there's a problem. But if they make a mistake, they're going to blame it on the, the new correction. So now she's done six serves. And she goes, whoa! And she goes, I never hit a serve that hard in my life. <laughs> but what was even more intriguing, a couple of the national coaches go, Rick, I've never seen her reach that high in three years. The other one says, that's the farthest she ever landed into the court since she's been here in Boca. Another one said, I've never heard that sound before. I didn't tell her to reach up higher. I didn't tell her to land in the court more. I didn't tell her to scream and yell and spit and make a noise to make it sound like it was bigger. Because the lake drive, the, the, this was timed differently as a byproduct of that timing. It shot the body higher into the air because it was more explosive. As a result of that, another cause and an effect, she landed more into the court. And another thing, the sound was different. So now she's out there going, whoa! She's just firing away from this position where a few minutes earlier she's complaining how bad it was. She's going, can I just keep serving like this? <laughs> and this was 10 minutes into the lesson where 10 minutes earlier she had to retire and she wanted nothing to do with what I was showing her. So it takes time, but she, she figured it out. The problem is, if you go from this progression, okay, the legs drive the racket. If the racket starts to leak, you're going to lose low power. Low power. The second serve, it's even more deadly. Anybody want to chime in? Why is it even worse on the second serve of this problem of the racket entering too soon? Anybody? have an idea why it'd be even worse on the second. Yeah, on the second serve, you're going, well, and it's mainly, well, obviously with kids, a little bit more, you know, on the WTA tour. You want to get it in. You don't want to miss. You don't want to choke. You can get away with it. You know, you're hitting more spin on the ball, so you're going to be more careful. All these things contribute to, I gotta, I'm got. i going to put the racket in a little bit. You can't see it. You can't see it on TV. You, you cannot see this. If you watch, all right, anything in high-speed video, you're going to see the minute this racket, especially the best servers, okay, the minute this racket starts to come in, the legs are coming up. If it's there, it's too late, too late, too late, too late. I can stop the video, all right, of a lot of people, pros, all right, you got to mention, their racket is here and their leg is here, still. Okay, when the racket's there, better is here. Roddy's here. Now, but everybody's already out of it. Look, when it's down, they're up. It's counterintuitive. As this comes in, this is coming up. Look familiar? But it's the entry. This is the number one problem. Nail it in, take it to the bank. This is the number one problem around the world. Around the world, and even at the professional level. So when people are saying, this uh, person has a great serve or whatever, you got to really know what you're looking at because it's, it's good. If you do something enough, you can make it halfway decent. You can make it halfway decent, but it's not optimal. But if you can keep an eye on this, it's you. Sometimes I'll tell people, don't even swing the racket. Just drive the legs and turn because you want to feel a stretch in your shoulder. It's like throwing a Hail Mary pass. Okay, when you throw, there's going to be a stretch here. If this is in too soon, and you're driving at the same time, the shoulder's not going to stretch. Like if I throw a football, you're going to feel this. If this is in too soon, you're not going to feel the stretch in the shoulder. It won't happen. So, back to what I was saying. 
corrective technique to put their house in order, <coughs> toss bend and tilt, let the legs drive the racket. If the racket's in too soon, it becomes a little bit of an issue. Now, on the surge, since I was talking about the legs, when you put the power starts from the ground, we all got to understand that. Forehand, backhand, serve, volley, overhead, it starts from the ground up. So we always got to un interact with the ground. Always. So remember that on every shot. But when you hit the serve, the legs, you want to, you, now if someone was real tight and you need to loosen them up, that's a whole different exercise. But I'm just saying, the power that you get comes from the legs. You got to push. The back leg is the big ticket item. It's the back leg. You're in this position. That's why the tilt. I see this a lot. The people will toss, bend, and squat. All right, they do this a lot. So now when you're here, you go this way. The serve is a giant cartwheel. That's all it is. It's a giant cartwheel. You're going to be in this position. Shoulder, shoulder, elbow. All right? And everything that you do. The leg drive initiates everything. One of the big things you want to focus on, try to get this elbow up as quickly as you can. It's a game changer. I see this all the time. A little more prominent with the guys getting the elbow up, and I go back to the throwing stuff as a youngster. A lot of the girls are in here. You want to be here. You get that elbow up, there's a cause and effect. If you get the elbow up quicker, when I drop, the entry just happens. I'm in the right way, it flares out the right way. Now I got all this rotation coming back in that way. Very, very important. Another thing to serve the edge of the racket. You want to focus on the edge of the racket. The edge is huge. If you don't have the right grip, whether it be a continental or an eastern backhand grip, I'll just say very matter of fact, you cannot ever learn to serve correctly. A little different on the ground strokes where there's a multitude of ways to handle the racket. If you're not going to hold a continental or an eastern backhand grip, a lot of the things that I'm going to explain right now, it's not going to happen. It can't happen. It's just the way your arm is, is going to approach the ball. It cannot happen. Now, if you just want to you know, play like that, that's okay. It doesn't matter what age. I hear this all the time. Well, they're too little. You shouldn't have them do that. You don't want to do that. They're too little. There's kids that have five, six years old that can leap with the edge. They can pronate, hit top spin. You're building. It's, to me, it's actually easier because you're, it's like a piece of clay that you can just kind of mold. you, you got to have a lot of patience. But you can mold it because there's no bad habit. It's just repetition, repetition, repetition. But back to the grip. If you have a continental grip, when you go back, the racket, if you have the right grip, you got a chance, when the racket comes in, it's going to come, the edge comes in. You notice where the edge is going. If I did this in real slow, you're going to see it. The edge comes towards the ear, right towards the ear. As I drive and rotate, it goes into that back area. You don't scratch the back, all right? Have your friends do that. You don't, that's nothing to do with hitting the back. It doesn't scratch the back. It just kind of checks out that neighborhood a little bit. It flares in and out. The racket stays on the hitting side of the body. Here we go again. Hitting side of the body. Hitting side of the body. One of the biggest culprits on the serve, because they want to get, they have their feet far apart. They over-rotate this part, too much twist. The racket goes back here, now they got to come all the way around. You're going to see every top player, and when you teach a lesson, stand in different places. Stand on the side. If I'm teaching someone and I'm on the side, you want to look for the racket going right down the middle of the head. That's where the racket goes. If you watch my racket, I already know where it's going to go when I swing the racket. If you're looking from the side, if you stop the camera, you're going to see it's right down the middle of the head. All right. If you're looking from the side, and I'm serving, you're going to see my racket's not way over here. And you see that all the time. You know what? You can get a, a buck 05, buck 10. You can still get away with it, but it's not optimal. You're never going to see that at the highest level. So it seems interesting that a lot of this is predicated on people want to make things bigger and longer because it's more effective because the kids don't have strength or they don't have maybe the power to do things, so they overcook a lot of these swings, and we don't want that. So, once again, the continental grip, when you have this grip, when you come in, it's going to be able to stay on the edge. If 
I had an Eastern grip, like maybe a lot of you need to teach like adults or whatever, they say, well, I want to get a better serve. If they don't change the grip, it's not going to get better. It might become less crummier, but it ain't going to get better. There's no way. Your racket's going to go this way. The racket's going to go that way. And you're not going to get anything coming out this way. And you're going to pronate. That means your arm form's going to turn too quickly as you go forward. There's nothing left. If you've got the right grip, edge goes in, edge goes out, edge comes back in, boom. And then you can break it off at the end with a, a good pronation. So the grip is critical to, to learn to speed and spin. You'll never be able to kick the ball or really spin it if you don't have the right grip on the serve. And this is a huge thing, uh, especially for some of you that people want to have their serves better. Now, if they just want to get more in, that's okay, but there's a ceiling if you're going to just use an eastern grip. I can't stress that enough. Now, circle them back. How are we doing with time? Thank you. Circle back. Let me just uh, let me just go through this. On the forehand crown stroke. One more time. 